Finite state automata, also known as finite state machines, or finite automata, or sometimes just as state machines, represents the simplest model of computation. It is one of the most fundamental building blocks of computer science, and is at the origin of numerous applications and algorithm manipulating strings. Before diving into this more complex algorithm, I want to make sure to introduce the ideas necessary to understand them. In this video, we are going to implement a string matching algorithm by building a deterministic finite automaton. Oh, and by the way, automata is the plural of automaton. This is going to be a pretty short and shallow introduction, so if you want to know more about finite state automata, I recommend you to watch the playlist about theory of computation and automata theory by Nezo Academy. Okay, so you can start by thinking of a state machine as a black box. This black box has an internal state, it has the ability to read an input, and it updates its state based on its previous state and the input it reads. In the case of a finite state automaton, the number of states the machine can be in is finite. So, if we take a look inside the black box, Throw it flashbang. we can see that the automaton is made of a finite number of states. The machine starts in the state pointed by an empty row, and can have zero, one, or several final states, represented by a double circle. The machine can change state, and the transitions are made after reading an input value. If we try to be a bit formal, we can define Q, the set of all possible states. We note Q0, the initial state. F is the set of final states. Sigma is the set of the possible inputs. And finally, delta is the transition function that given a state and an input returns the next state. And this tuple is the formal definition of a deterministic finite automaton, or DFA for short. There are different types of finite automata, but the ones we care about today are DFA and NFA, or non-deterministic finite automata. DFA form a subset of NFA, so all DFA are NFA, but the opposite isn't true. The only difference between a DFA and an NFA is how the transitions function is defined. A finite automaton is deterministic if there is no ambiguity. So for a given state and input, there is one and only one possible transition. It also means that for all states, all possible input in sigma has a transition. While for NFA, for a given state and input, there can be zero, one, or multiple transitions. The transition can be chosen at random, or can be all visited in parallel. So if we come back to our previous finite automaton, is it a DFA or NFA? Well, it's both. It's a DFA, and because DFA are also NFA, it means that it also is an NFA. I told you that in a DFA, every state has for each input at least one and only one transition. But if we look at the states 0, 1, and 3, they have missing transitions. When we omit transitions, it means that they are connected to a dead state. Once a dead state is reached, the machine cannot escape it and is stuck in it. Okay, now that we have covered the basics, NFA and DFA are useful because they have the ability to recognize a set of strings called a regular language. In theoretical computer science, a set of strings is called a language. And a language is regular if it is accepted by a DFA or NFA. For example, we can define the language L as the set of all strings starting with the letter AB, like AB, ABA, ABB, or ABAA. So we can build a DFA able to recognize all strings starting with AB. We start by defining our initial state 0. If the first letter is an A, we go to state 1. If we are in state 1, and if the second letter is a B, we can go to state 2. If we are in state 2, it means that we found a string starting with AB. So we reach our goal. So state 2 is a final state. And whatever comes next is not important because we already met our condition. But if we are in state 0 and read a B, or if we are in state 1 and read an A, the string we are reading isn't starting with AB, so we are reaching a dead state. This string isn't part of the language. We can modify our language to correspond to all strings containing AB, either at the beginning, the end, or in the middle. 
we have the same state 0, 1, and 2, but if in state 0 the machine reads a B, it stays in state 0. And if in state 1 the machine reads an A, it can stay in state 1. Here we've just shown that we can define a DFA able to find a pattern in a larger text. We can in fact build this DFA algorithmically. Here I've only showed you the graphical representation of a DFA, but we can represent it with a matrix. The states are the rows, and the symbols in our alphabet are the columns. In this example, when we are in state 0 and read an A, we go to state 1. If we read a B, we stay in state 0. When we are in state 1 and read an A, we stay in state 1. If we read a B, we go to state 2. Once we are in state 2, we stay in state 2, no matter what the input is. Ok, now we will focus on writing an algorithm to build this matrix. Let's build the DFA for the pattern Anpanman. Start with the initial state 0. And for each letter in the pattern, add a transition and a state. When we reach the last letter, the state is a final state. After this operation, we end up with this matrix. Now we need to take care of the remaining transitions. Here I've only put in the matrix the letters that appear in the pattern. Let's add a column for the rest of the alphabet, which is made of ASCII characters. When a letter isn't part of the pattern, then no matter the state we are in, we can go back to state 0. Letters that exist in the pattern need to be treated carefully, because of the possibility to find borders. A border is a proper suffix that is also a proper prefix. Consider the following example. If we try to read the string ANPANP, -A here the suffix ANP is also a prefix of the pattern. So when we read a P after reading ANPAN, we should go back to state 3. Ok, nice, but how can a computer do this? It's surprisingly easy. Assume that we've already built the complete DFA able to recognize the pattern ANPAN. If we read the string ANPAN, we end up in state 5. When we are in state 5, it means that we have found the 5 first letters of the pattern. Or if Q is the current state, we found P of 0 to Q minus 1. Now, if the next character is a P, it's different than the letter in the pattern. So the longest prefix of P starting at 0 stops there. The next possible longest prefix of P can only start at position 1. So we can go back to state 0 and start reading this string from position 1. We read an N, we stay in state 0. Same after reading a P. Now that we are reading an A, we can move forward to state 1. Then reading an N, we go to state 2. And finally, after reading P, we end up in state 3. So we can put an arc from state 5 to state 3. To find all the transition from this state 5, we want to repeat this operation for all letters in our alphabet. But we are not going to simulate the automata for the whole string every time, because only the last character changes. So we only need to do it once for n, p, a, n, and store the resulting state in a variable. Let's call it x. So after reading n, p, a, n, we end up in state 2, so x contains 2. It means that the state Q, or here 5, has the same transitions as state X or 2. So we can copy all transitions from state X to the current state Q. Then we only need to update the transition that goes from Q to Q plus 1, or from 5 to 6, which happens when we read the character at position Q in the pattern. Now we can move on to the next state. It's the same problem. We are in state Q, so we have found the prefix of length q. If the next letter doesn't match, then we need to read the string from 1 to q minus 1. But here, you need to realize that we already know the state when reading the string from 1 to q minus 2. We even stored it in x. So before moving to the next state, we read the input p of q. So we can update x by taking the transition from x when reading p of q which leads x to be 0. And then we can go to the next state where q is equal to 6. We can copy the transition of state 0 to state 6. Then we update the transition from state 6 to state 7 by reading p of 6. Then we repeat by updating the value of x, then the value of q, 
Then one more time, we copy the transitions of x to q. We update the transition from state seven to eight. We update the value of x, then the value of q. And finally, we copy the transition of x to q. And that's it. We've built the DFA able to recognize the pattern and panman. Let's implement it in JavaScript. Let's define a function called construct DFA. To keep things simple, and because I'm a lazy piece of shit, I assume that the pattern is only made of ASCII characters. Let's start by defining a constant m to all the length of the pattern. Then I convert the pattern into an array of numbers. Each letter of the pattern is converted to its corresponding ASCII code point. It's probably not the best thing to do, but, but it's so convenient that I didn't want to bother trying something else. Judge me. I don't care. Then I define the number of characters in the alphabet. I'm using ASCII, so we have 128 characters. Now we can start creating the transition matrix, which is made of m plus one states, or m plus one rows, and add one column per character. Let's initialize the first row with zeros, because when we are in state zero, all transitions go to zero, except when we read the first character of the pattern, in that case, we go to state one. Now we define x, the variable that will hold the state of the automaton when we read p from one to q minus one. We can then build the rest of the transition matrix by going through every state. We copy the transitions of x to the state q. We update the transition that goes from q to q plus one when we read the letter p of q, and we update the value of x. And that's it. We just need to return the transition matrix to be done with this part. Let's run this bad boy to construct the transition matrix for the pattern and pan man. I modified it a bit to make it more readable. Okay, seems all right. Let's now use this function to build our string matching algorithm. Let's begin by defining a constant n to hold the length of the text and a constant m to hold the length of the pattern. I create an array to store all the occurrences of the pattern in the text. Then we can construct the DFA using the function we just wrote. Once again, I convert the text into an array of numbers, which is much easier to process. Now, the idea is to go through the text character by character and update the state of the DFA. If we reach the final state, we know that we found the pattern in the text. So we start in state zero and look through the text we update the state by following the transition from the previous state and the character we are reading. And if that new state is the final state, then we found the pattern and we can put its index in the occurrences array. Finally, we just need to return the occurrences. And that's it. Isn't it so nice? So simple yet so beautiful. And what about its complexity? If we not sigma the number of letters in the alphabet, n the size of the text, and m the pattern's length, then the space complexity is big theta of the size of the transition matrix, so about m times sigma. To construct that matrix, we need the equivalent time, big theta of m times sigma. Once we have our matrix, we can find the pattern by going through the text once. So the matching time is big theta of n, if we put everything together, we end up with big theta of m times sigma plus n. The observations that help us write this algorithm were made by Knuth, Morris, and Pratt. They actually made one more observation that led to the development of the optimal worst case string matching algorithm called the KMP algorithm. But I will talk about this in the next video. So don't forget to subscribe.